afternoon and welcome back to Football League World TV. We've got another debate show for you this afternoon where we're going to be looking at Steve Bruce's appointment as a new manager of West Bromwich Albion in the Championship. I'm your host, Alfie Burns, and joining me are my colleagues, Ben Wignall and Chris Gallagher. Ben, how are you this afternoon? All good, Alfie. I had a decent weekend, p &E, even though I wasn't there at Hull, got three points um, on the road and we got a busy week of... EFL action, football action in general. And big talking point from last week, Steve Bruce being appointed at West Brom, which is something definitely interesting to dive into. Good stuff. Chris, we're diving into your neck of the woods this afternoon. How are you getting on? Yeah, not too bad. And yeah, same with Ben. Should be a, got an exciting few months ahead, haven't we? It'll be interesting to see how Bruce does with Albion. Absolutely. It's going to be good to get your opinions on this as a resident Wolves fan, Chris. So looking forward on Albion. We're discussing his appointment at West Brom and whether it's a good or bad decision by the baggies and we're streaming across Facebook, YouTube and Twitter this afternoon. So if you're joining us and you want to get in touch, get in touch and let us know your thoughts on Bruce's appointment as West Brom's new manager, whether he's going to get them promoted and just your overriding feelings about the baggies at this moment in time. Right, we're going to get straight into it. So Bruce has been appointed over the weekend as West Brom's new manager. But before we kick things off and, and get really stuck into Bruce, let's discuss Valerian Ismail, who's, of course, lost his job just a matter of months after leaving Barnsley for West Brom. Ben, I'll start with you. What do you think went wrong for Ismail at the Hawthorns? I think it was, you know, he came from a, a club like Barnsley who, you know, were kind of overachieved and there was instant expectation, wasn't there, that he would need to get the results to get West Brom back to the, the top flight. And to be fair, the first 10, 11 games, he was unbeaten, they were flying. But I think it soon became apparent when there was a few injuries and suspensions that he didn't really seem to have a plan B. Um, I think the squad in itself is pretty thin on the ground. Even there's a lot of quality in there. In the final few weeks, there's a lot of youngsters on the bench, ones that haven't been used by the club. Um, so I think the, the lack of plan B was probably a big factor, but also, you know, the, the kind of direct style of football he lives by probably not suited to the majority of the attacking players that, you know, West Brom have the likes of, you know, Robinson, Grant, Dean Garner, like to have it at the feet, running at defenders and his middle style of play just didn't really suit them, even when they did get results, um, I think obviously injuries wouldn't have helped, you know, the likes of Mowat and Clark were out for long periods at times. Um, I think the fan base as well just probably just didn't take to him his mail, and I think he didn't really seem to connect with the fans either, and that never never helps when a manager can't really connect with the fans. And you know, even when they were winning or getting draws in the final few weeks, it still seems to be quite toxic between you know both sets of parties. And you know, I think they came to the right decision in the end because I was at the Hawthorns when PNE played West Brom and he. The fans started streaming out after 70 minutes of chanting for Slavin Bilic back and yeah, it's something I had to change and, and lo and behold it did. What about you then, Chris? Do you think it was the right decision for West Brom to part company with his man? I think it was. I think if you look at the table, you can make an excuse to say it was really harsh because the aim was promotion and they're six now, I think. So he's got them in the mix, hasn't he? So it's not it's not like it was a disastrous job in terms of results anyway. But yeah, I think Ben touched right there. The big issue is the style of play and the fans. They weren't at all happy. So when you when you are like that, you're only one bad result away from a an angrier response than usual. So that that was the main problem. I think yeah, he could argue it doesn't suit this the the squad he has got. So and that in that sense, it probably was the right decision. But yeah, if if you are Ismail, you'd be going. I've been told to get you up, and you're in the playoffs. So it's not not the end of the world. And he, he could have been, he could have been given the season, but I think the the fans had turned too many of the fans had turned. So it was the right decision in that sense. Yeah, and West Brom have moved really swiftly to get Bruce in. You know, he, he's come around quite quickly. Bruce's arrival. He signed an eighteen month contract at the Hawthorns. Chris, I'll just stick with you here. What was your initial reaction to, to Bruce landing the West Brom job? Yeah, I think it made sense. I think a lot of people now, there's like an obsession with looking long term and trying to get all these plans for a few years. But the reality is when you come down, you've got to go up in the first two years, usually because otherwise the parachute payments and everything, it becomes a lot harder. So West Brom have to think short term. They have to try and get promoted this season. So in Bruce, they've got someone who's to, uh, took won four promotions twice at Birmingham and Hull, so he knows what it's about. So 
I can understand the big concerns about his recent record with uh, Villa and Newcastle, but it's it's like the Newcastle job especially was tough because he was never he was never uh, accepted there really. And when you look in hindsight, he didn't actually do that too bad a job, it's like especially when you compared him to Benitez, the, the league positions were similar. So. Yeah, they've gone for the short term, and I think that is the right thing to do because if they don't go up in two years, there will be an overhaul, and that's when you look at the the longer term. And then, but right now they they need they're in the mix for promotion, and they've picked someone who can deliver promotion. So I think it was you know, someone of his ilk was the right sort of manager to go for. Yeah, it feels like a real change in tact though from West Brom. I think Ismail was handed a four year contract when he took over in the summer with a view to sort of giving West Brom this style of play and, and and building for the long term rather than the short term. And that's obviously changed with Bruce landing an 18-month contract. Ben, how, where do you sort of stand on, on West Brom ditching the long term for the short term? I think it makes sense simply because, you know, I think Ismail obviously does a, probably a long-term project in there where they go up the first season, then, you know, try and solidify themselves as a Premier League club. But in Bruce, obviously, he's an, he's an older manager. I think he's, what, 61 now and... You don't really see many managers that age get the the long term deals. Um, so I think in that sense, it, you know, it makes sense. I think it was it was a a really short term fix. He'd probably only get a deal until the end of the season. But I think with an eighteen month contract, they kind of giving Bruce a little bit of leeway in the sense that if they don't go up this season, um, obviously Daryl Dykes out for a few months. So that's like already a, a big blow. Then he might get backed in the summer, and with the players they've got, if they you soon to lose like Sam Johnson and maybe one or two others, but I think they should be the base of it, a good squad there to to go up next season, if not um, this season. Absolutely, we're streaming across Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter this afternoon discussing Steve Bruce's appointment at West Brom and whether it's a good or bad decision by the baggies. We've had a couple of comments in already, and if you're joining us, please do get in the comments. We want to hear from you this afternoon. As you both sort of touched on already, Bruce's last job was at Newcastle and it's you know it's been quite well documented how much of a struggle it was for him at Newcastle over the course of the takeover and, and the fans really turning against him. It really looked like a job that, that left him drained and, and there was speculation that this that might have been Bruce's final job. But as it is, a couple of months later, he's back in management with West Brom. Ben, what do you think is triggered with Bruce then for, for him to take this job and, and get so quickly back into football management? Probably just the love of football, you know. I think it would have been like on his mind whether or not to you know, take a long break after the Newcastle job because it's a it was a really demanding job. You know, the fans were, they didn't really take to him, did they, from the start, even though he was a, a boyhood Newcastle fan. Um it did leave him a little bit drained, like you said, but I think when the opportunity comes to, you know, get back into the swing of things with a, a club that are aiming to get back to the Premier League, it's not really something you can, you know, turn down. Who knows what kind of other jobs he could have had lined up like towards the end of the season. Um, but this is a it's a really attractive one considering they might they've spent the best part of, you know, seven million on Daryl DK in the summer he could get similar kind of money if they don't go up to train, you know build that build that squad and that's something that's probably attractive to him. Obviously the the fan base probably won't take to him majorly after, you know, his kind of late form at Newcastle. I don't think he did too badly in his first two seasons, you know, if he finished twelfth and thirteenth, which considering he he didn't spend an amazing amount of money. Um I think it's a it was an alright finish. Obviously they've got the new takeover now and he was kind of a dead man walker when he came in that sense. But I think probably going back to the Midlands as well, probably attractive. You know, he's managed Birmingham Villa there and I think he lives in Staffordshire. So it's it's not a far cry from where West Bromwich is it. So I think probably location suited him, the job suited him. I think it's it's a kind of, I hate to use the word project, but I think it's a little project that he can, you know, get stuck into and, and probably be successful with it. And what about you, Chris? How do you think that the Newcastle job is going to impact Bruce going into West Brom? I think there's a, there's definitely a case to say that, that West Brom are going to benefit from maybe the most motivated Bruce has been in a long, long time to prove his doubt was wrong. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah, he was written off by everyone, really, till it came a, a laughing stop, really, among the Newcastle fans, and they're just desperate to get rid of him. And yeah, as we've touched on, his finishes in the Premier League weren't that bad in the full seasons he was there. So that shows he is a good manager. So 
So yeah, he will be keen to show that that doesn't define him as a manager because he has been a lot. He's been at loads of clubs, hasn't he? But the Newcastle period is one that will really stick out when you look when he looks back at his career in terms of the just everything that came with it. There's a lot of just yeah. There's a lot of hype around Newcastle, isn't there? He probably won't get West Brom. He'll be able to. It, it, there's not. I wouldn't say there's less pressure because the West Brom fans will be demanding, but it's not. It's not the same spotlight when you're not in the Premier League and you're not managing your boyhood club. So I think in that sense, it is taking him away from it a bit, and that could be good. Yeah, he won't, he'll be able to get his ideas across quickly. There won't be. There will be. Again, it's it's a balance. He's got to get success, but there won't be as much pressure and as, as willing to turn. So yeah, I think it could work for him. That it's a, a nice little job in the Championship, and he can. It's a it's a good job. He's, he can take them up, and he'll. He will be targeted in eight in eighteen months to have them safe in the Premier League. That will be his long term or his aim in that period. Let's quickly just discuss the squad at West Brom that Bruce is inheriting. Then I think you know we we can all probably be in agreement that it's a very good squad. Valerianismo is using a three four three system, you know, which he'd used at Barnsley and carried with him to the Hawthorns. And he did, like any manager, have his have his favourites within that squad. Chris, who do you think Bruce is going to take a shine to then within in this current West Brom squad? Well, the obvious one is going to be Dean Garner, isn't it? I think we all know how good he was in the Championship under Billic and the excitement when West Brom brought him in from West Ham and the anger at West Ham. So that shows how good he was, how highly regarded he was. But it just hasn't worked for him since, has it? He hasn't hit the heights that we all know he's capable of. And he's been quite disappointing. He, the style of play with Ismail wouldn't have helped. And what, what you do hear about Bruce is that he's just an, he's an excellent man manager. He's not so much focused on the tactical side. He'll just give players the freedom to play. And I think Dean Garner is one of those who, who needs that. He needs like an arm around the shoulder type. And if he does get him firing, he's, he's capable of being one of the best players in the league. So I think Bruce has got to make sure he doesn't I wouldn't say build the team around him, but he puts him in the team and makes him a, an important part of it. Because if he does, he can beat players, he can score goals, he's got an eye for a pass. So he's, he's got the lot at this level, really. So that's where I'd be looking at firstly to try and get him firing. And what about you, Ben? Who do you see really shining under Bruce? And, and on the flip side of that, is there anyone that was in favour under Ismail that you can see falling down the pecking order a little bit? Well, I can see the attacking players, you know, like your Robinsons, your Grants, your Dean Garner's kind of flourishing. Um, I don't think Bruce can go direct with his teams, but I think it'll be different to Newcastle in the sense that, you know, West Brom, they expect to, you know, beat more teams with the players they've got so he can play football on the front foot. Uh, he can change that kind of direct style and can play it on the floor in, in those kind of, you know, styles. I think... Players that might fall out of favour. I think Dominic J. Livermore has been doing himself any favours the last few months. I think he's been playing pretty poorly. I know Bruce had him at, at Hull, but I think Jason Mullum, because, you know, end up getting a chance because of Livermore's recent performances. I'd like to see Darryl O'Shea come right back in as well when, when he's fit. I think he's not too far from returning from his injury. But I would like to have, you know, Daryl DK is injured for, I think, about six weeks still now, but. I would like to see Reyes clear get a chance. He's a young young striker in the under 18s and under 23s. I think he's got something like 12 and 8 for the under 18s and 7 and 11 for the under 23s. And, you know, West Brom are kind of pining for him to, you know, get his chance, um, even though he's 17 years old. So I'd kind of like Steve Bruce, you know, kind of get him in with a first team squad. And, you know, Taylor Gordon Hickman as well. He's another young player that's come to the fore this season that I'd like to see Bruce given the chance. Um, so I think he'll he'll try and get the best out of those kind of attack-minded younger players um, and the likes of Livermore who have, haven't been performing to the you know, high standards this season could you know end up taking a little bit of a backseat. Yeah, I think just going back to, to what I first mentioned there, the 3-4-3 three, three with Ismail, you know, that was always going to be the case with West Brom right from the start of the season. But when it comes to Bruce, there's not really a system that sticks in my mind anyway of, of that's what he's going to come in and play. Chris, what do you feel that this West Brom squad's best way to use them would be? What system would it be? Would it still be with the three-man defence and the wing-backs or would it be, you know, maybe getting your better players out wide that are more suited out wide rather than in a 3-4-3 three, three system? Yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah, I think, as you say, he does adapt to what he, he's got. So, yeah, I think if you do look at it, say the, the wide men are the key players in this team. So you'd maybe a 4-2-3-1 a or a 4-3-3, maybe lacking a quality number 10 for the 4-2-3-1. But, yeah, they, they have got enough attacking options and you want to 
that's how they should play. They should be a side on the front foot. And yeah, that is more, you lean towards the back four for that. So you get Deanne Garner wide, you get Robinson and Grant in the final third, maybe even a 4 4 2 if you have Carroll there as the traditional target man. So there is a lot of options with the attack. So that's, that's always a good place to start, isn't it? You have to try and get your match winners on the pitch. And they do have a lot of them. And with Ismail, it did feel as though he was playing this way. He didn't really care what the players were. This is, we're playing this, we're playing 3 4 3, and they're going to have to adapt. And really, you should look at what you've got and try and make the best for the players as opposed to having your own idea and then just sticking with that regardless. And what about you, Ben? Where do you where do you stand on the system that you feel would suit West Brom best? Yeah, I was looking at Bruce's, you know, the formations he, he used at Newcastle and he, like you say, he didn't really have a set system. You know, he kind of used like a 4-4-2, 5-4-1. He kind of like alternated. So he, unlike Ismail, does seem to have a plan B and a C. And I tend to agree with Chris. I think, you know, a 4-3-3, a 4 2 Three one could you know suit this team best you know Robinson and, and Dean Garner coming off the the wings cutting inside and Grant as a central striker that could for the next few weeks be a, a system that could be explored. Uh, obviously DK coming back will complicate things you know that those four attacking players into three positions. Obviously someone's going to have to miss out every week and it could be a case of rotation. Um, like Chris said in the four two three one, they're probably missing like a. A number 10, but we have seen there's some free agents out there like Jack Wilshire who could, you know, provide a, a bit of a creative spark in, in that role if, if he sees fit. Um, yeah, I tend to agree with Chris, you know, 4 2 3 1, 4 3 3, I think should be given a chance in the next few weeks. It's just something different to what they've seen this season and um, they can see if it works going forward. Absolutely. The next few games, I'm sure, will give us an idea of, of where Bruce sees this squad going and how they're going to shape up in terms of the system. Probably the leading quote following Bruce's appointment at West, West Brom was, I'm coming with one aim and that's to get Albion to the Premier League. He's done that before with a host of different clubs and he's won promotion out of the Championship countless times. But a pretty simple question for both of you, which I'll start with you, Chris. Do you see Steve Bruce doing that and taking West Brom into the Premier League in the next 18 months? Um, well, I think they've got every chance. I think this season's going to be hard. I think they've probably got just a bit too much work to do to finish top two. Well, the, way, the way Bournemouth are stuttering and Blackburn haven't obviously lost it last time out. So they probably do have a chance, but they're going to have to show top uh, title winning form, I'd say, for the next 17 games to be able to finish in the top two. So that is a big ask, but playoffs is obviously the minimum expectation this season. Then anyone's got a chance, I think. The big problem for them is you could have Forest and Middlesbrough in particular in the playoffs as well. And then you've got three really, really good sides who are capable of winning promotion. So that would be a good watch. But yeah, but they'll certainly be up there. And then, yeah, then you're obviously trying to say next season, we don't know how the summer will go. They're going to lose Sam Johnston, you'd expect on a free if they don't go up. So it'll be harder. But either way, they're going to have a good squad. So yeah, I think they'll certainly be in with a shout this season and next season if they don't go up. So yeah, they've, they've got every chance. And what about you, Ben? In the next 18 months, is Bruce going to deliver promotion at, at the Hawthorns? He could do, yeah. Um, I definitely expect him, you know, to get in the the playoff places if you know if they can kind of turn the, the recent bad form around. They definitely got the players to do so. If they do fall short, obviously wary that you know the likes of Nottingham Forest, Sheffield United, and Middlesbrough are all in you know good form and better form than West Brom at the minute. Um, I think if it doesn't happen this season, I think definitely he could be backed next season. Obviously, there's he didn't spend that much money in the summer, but Ismail was backed in the final few weeks of his reign with with DK coming in. Um, but I think with Bruce coming in, he's got that experience of promotion. He should get you know kind of what he wants. Maybe that's the reason why he's swiftly come in because he's kind of been given some guarantees that he will be given what he wants when when the time's right. Um, I can definitely see him doing it. He's got the track record. Um, uh, obviously, the start of the season at Newcastle wasn't great for him, but I think he's a, he's a better manager than that. And coming back down to championship level, I think he's got the the nous and the kind of management skills to get the best out of these players. I think that's probably a good place to, to reach a conclusion then. And of course, we're debating whether it's been a good or bad decision by West Brom bringing in Steve Bruce on an 18-month contract. Ben, start with you. You know, let, Let's have your conclusion here, whether Bruce is a good appointment or not. I think it is in the short term, yeah. I mean, when obviously the, 
when this Wales sacking got announced, Bruce wouldn't have been in my top five choices, really. I completely kind of overlooked him. Um, but when you kind of look deeper at it, I think with his experience of getting promotion and, you know, there's, he's got glowing references from, you know, past players saying he's a great man manager. I think he can get the best out of, of these players and something that Ismail didn't. So I think it is a, a good decision to appoint him, at least in the short term. And what about you, Chris? Good or bad decision? Yeah, I'd say it's a good decision. I think if you look at it straight, they've, they've got more chance of winning promotion now with Bruce than they did with Ismail last week. So, yeah, in that sense, it's it's a good decision. Obviously, we'll find out in the next 18 months. Absolutely. A long way to go this season and, and plenty of twists and turns in the Championship, I'm sure. That concludes this afternoon's debate show. Thanks to Ben and Chris for joining me. Some really good opinions and insights there. Coming up on Football League World TV tomorrow, we've got a debate show. We're looking at the three most underrated January signings from across the AFL. And we're also going to be looking ahead to the midweek action so between now and then tech care